Thank you, and good afternoon. As I was introduced, I'm Michael Cannon, and I pretty much run success management at Accelerant. Uh, we're pretty much an online uh, software development company that provides solutions for creative and marketing agencies around the world. So that's part of the reason why I get to travel a bit. It's got uh, people and clients really all over the place. So I'm a little bit lucky. I get to go do uh, a lot of different things in the world. Uh, but these days, I spend a lot of my time actually thinking about what we want to be doing as, as a company ourselves, okay? It's not a case of, hey, I actually want to build something cool. Of course we want to do. You know, we're doing things like increasing uh, retail customer engagement uh, as part of digital transformation with other organizations and things like that. However, before we can actually get to that stage, we actually need to be working with people to figure out what really kind of matters for them. And so I'd like to share a little bit of a story with you. And it kind of goes like this. Don't let your success be an accident. All right? In the beginning, at least over the past dozen plus years, there was quite a bit of uh, projects that we had been engaged in over time. And part of the time, we did uh, some, some good work. Sometimes we do some not so good work and uh, you know, get to sign some really big name companies, and because the work wasn't all that great, you, know, you would actually lose these accounts. And it's really tough uh, being able to pay the bills and little things like that if your experiences for clients aren't all that, mm, frankly, consistent or great. Uh, as a case in a point, you can actually have the worst customer service in the industry, but yet your business will survive because people know what to expect from that experience that they have with you. Now. If you're kind of like a mid-range company and you are sometimes great, sometimes pretty poor, and every interaction is inconsistent in that, then customers really don't know what to expect of you. So they tend to move on to something in which they can understand what they can expect. So as part of that inconsistency that happens, even your employees might decide to leave on because they want somebody that knows what they're doing. So where customer experience comes into play is actually at this higher level concept called the customer journey. And the customer journey is uh, really an end to end, or actually the start of a continuous cycle for how somebody, uh, account, a client, a customer, uh, become aware of your organization, how they become to like what you're doing, begin to trust it, uh, be involved with your doing things, and hopefully growing a bit of value. Well, this is where we had to realize that we needed to step back from our inconsistent experiences. It's like, instead of doing you know, these kind of operations for this kind of client, these kind of operations for another kind of client, uh, we actually need to start figuring out, well, what's the baseline? What's the kind of core experience that we're going to have with our, within our organization and deliver to that? So by stepping back and taking a look at the whole picture of what we want to do, then we came into this customer journey. So the first part of it is really getting to know about the kinds of customers that you want to be working with. And I admit, even before you get to worry about this, you need to be knowing what it is that you as an organization want to provide. Is it uh, a piece of software? Is it a food service? Uh, or is it mm, hey, yeah, a medical care thing of just being able to provide uh, massages? But the thing is, is no matter what the offering is, you need to have an idea what it is that you really want to do. So then you can start figuring out what that customer journey is uh, to know, hey, these are the kind of clients you want to be working with. Uh, these are the ways that you want to be interacting with them. And I can get a little bit more into it, but really you need to know what you want to do as an organization so then you can start making other people aware about it. So as people begin to get aware of what your organization does, you need to start worrying about this thing called build some confidence. Okay? Oh, actually, which here yeah, we're calling it liking it. So under the concept of liking it is going back to a little bit of the old school thing. I know a lot of the operations that we do these days is based around SaaS, uh, software as a service and other, other similar things. However, what's going on is to bring back the 
you know, a better customer relationship is to actually have a relationship with the customers that you do have. And frankly, it can be a case of have a personal interaction with them, actually in some cases, uh, especially if you're dealing with larger accounts, know, uh, know about their kids, uh, what kind of schooling is going on, what kind of vacations. And the, the real point though is have a relationship so that you can understand where relevancy for your organization fits into for the kinds of accounts that you want to be working with. Now, where we get to the trusting, or yeah, actually trusting so that we can get started on doing something, this is kind of where the, all the different ideas you might have about the things that you want to do need to come into place as far as an actual roadmap. Or in our case, we actually utilize something that's called a storyboard. And this particular storyboard is actually the third epic, because since we're in Agile, or we do a lot of Agile work, we utilize the, uh, utilize the uh, epic terminology as, long, as well as kind of releases. So what each of these cards represent is a point of interaction that one of nine different kind of roles across our organization and, an inc and the customer uh, need to be concerned about. But the thing is, is uh, say across a uh, staffing engagement where an uh, organization has a little bit of a capacity capability shortfall, some of our people come in and help them, technically we've actually identified about 700 points of engagement, uh, or not really points of engagement, but kinds of interactions. Well, frankly, it's not feasible to really automate and uh, have all those things on a, on a manual basis. So what you can come up doing is actually say, well, here's the full potential what, of what we could do, but you start identifying, well, what are the things that really have the greatest impact, okay? And so that allows you to ensure they get the right people, you're coming across with the relevant uh, solutions, and uh, be, frankly, having some clear agreements uh, between yourself, those that you're working with, and the people that you wanna be servicing. Now, since you have a bit of the roadmap, you got your project systems kind of going, you, you, your clients know what's, what's going on, uh, you have basically what we consider the fourth stage or execution or uh, demonstrating that trust, you know, getting things done. And really here, it's again going back to following the game plan. If you say you're going to do daily stand-ups and uh, weekly releases or you're going to have a certain kind of communication protocol, it's it, again, it's about the consistency. And also ensuring that, uh, the, the, that the customer or that who you're dealing with has consistent and good outcomes. You know? So along the way, again, the, the key point is to be eliminating inconsistencies in the things that your organization does. And lastly, one of my favorite parts, especially where I'm coming in, is because you've had a successful relationship of being able to provide some service or some product for the kind of accounts that you've been working with, uh, whether they're uh, consumers or they're large enterprises, you can start working on the important thing of starting to grow your value together, where instead of being, all right, he, here's an outsourcer and here's a company, start actually start working together as a partner. So such that one plus one isn't two, but it's actually 11. Because by working together, by collaborating together, you can start doing quite a bit more. Uh, to, <laughs> you know, I love the word together, hey. So this last part's really ensuring that you're starting to have future alignment for what's going on. Now, getting into the customer journey, customer uh, experience, uh, maybe a broader term, customer success. This is a concept that came out about 10 years ago, and it's kind of much touted, and I admit, um, when I was first kind of pushed into my role, not really pushed, but I kind of jumped into my role, uh, my initial list of, hey, the things I'm going to say, hey, then we're going we're gonna to focus on these things was like 50 items long. And I figured with my team, we'd come up with 100. But as I kind of mentioned earlier, it became 700. So what I would like to point out is to do something like this well, it's actually a lot more effort than you're going to be expecting. And so because of that, we actually needed to come back and, well, frankly, focus on just a few aspects. What is it that causes the most friction? 
Is it the communication delays? Is it the quality aspects of something that we're dealing with? Is it a lack of expertise that's being applied? Is it uh, risk not being reduced as much as it should for where you're going? So when you get into something for the customer journey to start you know, banging on the customer experience, you want to, frankly, be worried about just a thin line of your business. You do not want to try to do everything all at once. Uh, as, as an example, say Pizza Hut wanted to uh, really uh, do two things uh, twofold. Uh, at a high level, really streamline the online ordering of their daily pizza specials, which in turn goes out to the store so that they get delivered. Okay. Well, the thing is, is instead of completely revamping their online offer, uh, e-commerce platform, what they did is just went for introducing some uh, uh, insets and actually ran a secondary system uh, alongside of the primary. So by doing that, they were actually able to divorce themselves from pre-existing infrastructure. Okay? So the idea here is just worry about trying to do uh, one aspect or one thin slice of, what, uh, of your business that you want to try to focus on. Okay? And uh, really, remember at a high level, it's about the people and the processes that kind of lead into systems. And most importantly, keep it short and sweet. Uh, this is definitely a case of you can make things too complicated, which is something that we've run into. It's like even uh, uh, as, as we've been going along, we keep having to step back. How can we make it simpler so that people understand things? Now. The downsides to customer journey that uh, a lot of organizations think, they just think it's uh, uh, give a couple of people uh, the role and, and throw it out there. Well, I have to admit this, what I do now is really one of the greatest challenges that I've ever had in my career. And I've been doing IT for about 35 years. And it's actually the most fun and most loving because I've actually had to rethink how everything in an organization works. It's like whenever uh, I've been involved with, whether it's my own companies or other companies, you, you get to the point of there's always something missing, but weirdly under the customer success, customer journey aspects, everything that we do that's geared towards the customer experience and even the employee experience is all about a purpose. So that means that organization needs to have a purpose because what then happens is the, or, the organization purpose defines what kind of values that the organization have. And if those values are there, then we know what kind of people we want to have. And why do the people matter? Because the people define those relationships or create those processes that we're going to be working with. And we're going back to this con con consistency concept. It's fine if you've got a bunch of processes, but if there's no system in place to actually bring it all together, uh, whether it's from a, a tactical aspect or a, strate a strategic overview and a, a future alignment thing, it's not going to work. So, oh yeah, my favorite part. <laughs> Even doing something simple. Uh, I, I thought this 18 months was a bunch of baloney. It's like, no, nah, we're, we're smart. We'll get through it in like six months. Oh my God. Uh, I, I, we keep kind of simplifying things and we're still at about nine months and uh, I can easily see version one for doing something really well is about uh, is about nine months. Or excuse me, is about uh, eighteen months. But uh, for what we're working on, really on solidifying the way that we do account operations and staffing operations, uh, we actually started seeing major improvements uh, within about six months. So, get a little recap. You know, when it comes to like customer journeys, uh, you know, again. Focus on a small part of the business that's end-to-end. -end. Empower the people to, be, uh, to do the things that need to be done. Uh, be talking with everybody that's involved. This is actually really one of the coolest things I, that I really, really like about Customer Journey is everyone is involved in it. Uh, I actually have come to realize that this is a really good check of if the organization really knows what they're about, which kind of goes back to my original statement of don't let success be an accident. You know, before we were lucky, now we know what the heck we're doing. <laughs> uh, what's also kind of nice is, especially when you get into the customer journey, as, as a way you can't really just manage people, but you need to be able to d determine a way to lead them. And the way to do that leadership is by having a decision framework. 
and getting to the decision framework actually comes down to understanding what the purpose is for the organization, the values around it, and what's, uh, what's really the priorities around the kinds of engagements and accounts that you have. So once you have those sort of things, the team that is on that account or on that engagement can actually be able to make the decisions that need to be made. So, the right thing, you know, so basically the right thing and the next right decision gets handled. And uh, lastly, most importantly, especially under the agile concept, always be having regular uh, retrospectives and iterations for what's going on. Uh, now, wonderfully, I've uh, kind of wrapped it. Uh, I'm kind of curious who else here is maybe on the non development technical side of the house or who's customer facing? How about that? That's, that's customer facing. Okay. Well, Mashari, I'll come back to you, but it's Vivek, right? Yeah. How are you customer facing? Mm -hmm. Okay. And behind you, how are you involved with customers? Ah. Okay, all right, and over the back here. Right? Oh, okay. Yeah. Right. Yeah, great, thanks. And Mishari, let everybody else know how you interact with people. Ah, whiner. All right. So, Actually, one of the things that I kind of like to point out is when it does come around the customer experience, even though I kind of keep throwing that word customer around, it's actually about the people. And it's not just the external people to an organization, but it's even the people within. And uh, all right, really with that, I would really like to be able to take your questions. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> Been there, done that. <laughs> Weirdly, when we started saying no, that what the customer was asking for or providing alternatives, uh, started standing up for what we believe in. Uh, it was actually weirdly, yeah, it's kind of like when we started having more of a backbone for how we felt that things really needed to be and sticking with it, that actually started changing the kind of conversations that we were having. And in many ways, I think that's sort of the, 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 the turning point. Uh, also being up front, that our relationship is not about being given something. Uh, the term is thrown over the fence. It's like we have to work together. It's like even if we're going to the restaurant to g uh, get a burger, uh, I mean, I have food allergies up the yin yang. It's terrible. Uh, it's like I need to be able to actually communicate with my server who then needs, needs to communicate with the cook to be able to get something that's not literally going to kill me or at least make me really ill for a, for a while. And it's like when people are willing to communicate and be kind of uh, uh, trusting, truthful, and transparent, then we can actually get to you know, rela really higher level relationships. Yeah, absolutely. I, 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 you know, as a, as a backstory, it's like years ago, sure, our thing was doing two to $5,000 kind of opportunities, whether it's uh, project product or uh, staffing engagements. Now we're much more into, you know, $100,000 actually a little bit on the small side. You know, what really means is where, say, somebody at the pet store really just needs to be able to talk to you for about five minutes to do a $10 sale or even a $100 sale, my conversations might last in between six months to three years before something comes around, but that's where actually having to be really interested in people, having to know what is it that their organization wants to be accomplishing is really coming into play. Because whenever you're talking to somebody, it can't just be all about the sales aspect. Uh, you know, it's kind of, 
<laughs> I actually have various kinds of nurturing cycles, and, and frankly, I rarely actually mention something like, oh, hey, uh, we've got some free people. No, I'll be like, hey, we just uh, launched Pottery Barn in the Middle East. Oh, uh, City of Dreams over here is you know, doing something pretty cool. But before all that, it's like, oh my gosh, it's like minus five, de minus five degrees outside. You know, How are you surviving the winter? Uh, it's really start about being personable with the people. Uh, so really kind of going back to more truthful or more authentic relationships. And frankly, if you just don't get it with that person, throw them over to one of your salespeople <laughs> or the marketer. <laughs> okay, so uh, you, you mentioned something quite interesting, uh -huh. um, personable. Yeah. I've, uh, I've, I've come to realize that uh, even uh, as uh, typical geeks uh, and as a team, it is a very, very good idea for people to be personable. Yeah. Um, but then, uh, what um, do you have uh, any recommendations on how uh, to train geeks to be more personable? <laughs> In some ways, it's a little bit of an easy one. First off is, actually, it's not such an easy one, really. <laughs> you got to go back to what the organization purpose is. Because then that also starts to define well, what's, uh, what kind of values are important to you for your organization. Because then those kinds of values define what kind of people that you want to hire. For, for where I work at Accelerant, you know, it's called ECHO, enthusiastic, kind, and open. So the people that we come in, frankly, they need to be able to communicate because communication is the key for everything that we do. Uh, sure, we might be able to do video conferences, but guess what? Uh, you still need to write something that other people can understand. Uh, however, when, whether we just want to be a little bit more grosso, we actually have a life coach uh, at, uh, at our place of employment. And at first I thought it was like one of those wishy-washy things. Now I'm like totally hardcore for it because the life coach actually really demonstrates that we care about somebody uh, personally and professionally. And, uh, you know, sometimes I even have talked to my life coach about marriage issues. <laughs> But it's through that, enabling the ability to have uh, soft skills development within the organization. Two minutes and 30 seconds. Yeah, it's, I've seen it around a little bit. Um, in many ways, it's kind of like, I'm a more personable chief, operation, uh, chief operating officer. Um, and it also depends upon what the organization structure is. Again, for my particular role is really about uh, the, overall, uh, the overall customer success. And for us, customer success means highly engaged teams, positive account experiences, and expected outcomes. So that pretty much means that account managers, project managers, and engineering managers uh, report to me, and then through them, all the delivery. So that's uh, chief success officer for us. It was a bit of uh, an attempt uh, pushing towards a uh, holacracy or basically you know, truly being self-managed teams, uh, driving towards eliminating silos. But that's really one of the biggest things that, that goes on here when you're dealing with the customer journey is you have to break the silos like crazy. It's like you're doing your status meetings, even marketing, you know, some marketing rep needs to be there. Uh, people need to be aware. All right, 57 seconds, 56, 53. Oh, you've been fantastic. Oh, feel free to holler at me. It's Michael, Accelerant, or the photographer guy. 